It seems the James Webb Telescope won't cease to amaze us. Recently, it was able to capture images of stars being born in the Tarantula Nebula. But what is a nebulae, you ask? Nebulae are large areas where stars are being made. They're usually where stars are born. But not every nebula is a place where stars are born, and even those that are can be different. I know you are slightly confused, just watch on to learn. Let's begin by highlighting the different types of nebulae. First, stellar nurseries. Nebulae are the places where stars are made. There are two kinds of nebulae, reflection and emission. A reflection nebula is a place where stars are born that reflects light instead of sending it out. A reflection nebula can give off light, but the nebula's density usually stops any light from getting out into space. Instead, the light of nearby stars will be sent out into space by a reflection nebula. Since reflection nebulae don't give off light, it's hard to figure out exactly what they're made of. When astronomers make a spectrum of a reflection nebula, the spectrum shows that the reflected light is made of and, by extension, what the objects are made of whose light is being reflected. If you look at the color, you can usually tell if a nebula is a reflection nebula or not. Most of the time, reflection nebulae are blue because they scatter blue light. The reflective nebulae are the exact opposite of the emission nebulae. Most stars are born in emission nebulae, and the amount of energy given off by so many new stars ionizes the atoms in the nebula. When photons with a lot of energy hit nearby atoms, they make the electrons in those atoms jump to a higher energy level. When these electrons go back to their original energy level, they release their stored energy in the form of photons, making light. Emission nebulae can make their own light in this way. Astronomers can use spectroscopy to find out exactly what is in emission nebulae because of this. The color of an emission nebula can be used to tell it apart from a reflection nebula. Most emission nebulae are red because hydrogen atoms that are excited tend to give off red light. Second, planetary nebula. There are two kinds of nebulae that don't have stars making themselves. Instead, they are made of material from stars that have died and sent their stuff out into space. Planetary nebulae and supernova remnants are the two types of stellar remnant nebulae. Almost every star starts out the same way. A cloud of hydrogen gas collapses under the force of gravity. When a lot of hydrogen sticks together and forms huge clouds, its temperature goes up. When the conditions are right, hydrogen nuclei can fuse together to make helium nuclei. This is how stars are made. As long as hydrogen fusion happens in the core of a star, the energy made balances out the gravity of the star, keeping it in a state of balance. But every star has a limited amount of hydrogen hydrogen that can be used. Every star will run out of it at some point. When stars like the sun run out of hydrogen, helium builds up in the center of the star. As the conditions for helium fusion get worse, the star's gravity takes over and the star starts to fall apart. As the star starts to fall apart, the temperature and density starts to go up. These changes let the star turn helium into even heavier elements like carbon and oxygen by fusing it together. As the star starts to combine heavier elements, energy from its core now tips the scale and takes over from gravity. The star starts to grow much bigger than it was before. As the star gets bigger, the surface temperatures spread out over a bigger area. Because of this, the outer layers of the star slowly cool down, giving it a red color. The star has turned into a red giant at this point, as different atoms build up and fuse in the star's core. This process of contracting and expanding may happen more than once. Even though the star has grown to be many times bigger than it was before, its mass has been going down. As the star grows bigger, its own gravity can't keep everything together. The star's outer layers start to dry out and fall apart. At some point, the star will lose most of its mass, leaving behind a shell of stellar matter. This shell is called a planetary nebula. Finally, supernova remnant. Stars with a high mass die in a very different way than stars with a low mass. Since they are much bigger, the star's gravity pulls down on them much harder. This lets them fuse together much heavier elements. As soon as a star with a lot of mass makes iron in its core, it is doomed. Even though the biggest stars will be able to turn iron into even heavier elements, this process takes more energy than it 
gives off. Because of this, the star's gravity takes full control, and the star will eventually fall apart. In the core, the pressure gets so high that atoms are squished together, and electrons and protons even join together to make neutrons. Neutrons now make up almost all of the core, making it what is called a neutron star. As the star's outer layers fall off, they hit the neutron star that is forming. This causes a huge explosion called a supernova. The energy from such an explosion might even be brighter than all the stars in the galaxy put together. Material from the star is sent out into space and becomes a supernova remnant. Now, let's move on to the main topic of the day. James Webb Telescope captures detailed new images of stars being born in Tarantula Nebula. NASA has released two amazing new pictures of the Tarantula Nebula that were taken by the James Webb Telescope. These pictures show a nearby part of the universe that could help astronomers learn more about how stars are made. The Tarantula Nebula, also known as 30 Doradus, is in the Large Magellanic Cloud Galaxy, which is only 161,000 light years from Earth and is part of the group of galaxies closest to the Milky Way. It is also called the Spider Nebula. When pictures of the nebula were taken in the past, it looked like long clouds of dust and gas were coming out of the center like a spider's web. But the new pictures, which were taken with the James Webb Telescope's infrared sensors, show a more complex and detailed picture of what's going on at the center of the nebula, where stars are being made at a very fast rate. The first picture, which was taken with the telescope's near-infrared camera, NIR Cam, is 340 light years wide and shows a group of massive stars making room for themselves at the center of the nebula by destroying the matter around them with blistering radiation, as NASA put it. Smaller points of light that can be seen in the gas and dust clouds are protostars. These are young stars that are still gaining mass as they move out of the web of the nebula and into its center. Nobody has ever taken a picture of a protostar because the matter around it is too dense for visible light to pass through. The region looks very different in a second image released by NASA. It was taken with the telescope's mid-infrared red instrument, MIRI which makes the cooler gas and dust glow blue while the hot stars fade into the background. Astronomers are especially interested in the Tarantula Nebula because its chemical makeup and behavior are similar to what would have happened in parts of the early universe when star formation was at its peak. This time is called Cosmic Noon for the Universe. Finally, as a bonus, NASA releases pictures of exoplanet 6 to 12 times the mass of Jupiter. It might look like a few colorful smudges, but but it could be the next step toward finding other planets that are good places to live. NASA has released the first picture of HIP 65426b, a planet outside of our solar system that is 6 to 12 times as heavy as Jupiter. It is the first time that astronomers have used NASA's James Webb Space Telescope to take a direct picture of a planet outside our solar system. The image, as seen through four different light filters, shows how Webb's powerful infrared eye can easily capture worlds outside of our solar system. This shows the way for future observations that will reveal more information than ever before about exoplanets. Compared to Earth, which is 4.5 billion years old, it is a young planet, being only 15 to 20 million years old. The exoplanet is a gas giant, which means it doesn't have a rocky surface and might not be able to support life, according to Sasha Hinckley, an associate professor of physics and astronomy at the University of Exeter, who led the observations with other scientists from around the world. Exoplanets are hard to see through telescopes because the bright light of the stars they orbit hides them. The near-infrared camera, NIR cam, and the mid-infrared instrument, MIRI, on the Webb telescope both have coronagraphs, which are tiny masks that block out starlight and let it take direct pictures of some exoplanets like this one. Exoplanets are also a long way from Earth. The distance between Earth and HIP 65426b is 385 light years. Well guys, that's it for today. Thanks for sticking with us till the very end. For more space exploration news, subscribe to the channel.